So yesterday we got another weapon tuning pass for Modern Warfare 2, which then extends to Warzone 2.0. Some of the things we saw were smaller in some spaces and larger in others, while some of the more questioned weapons in their own right didn't get the biggest tuning adjustments, but instead were more comprehensive changes when added to the already existing weapon tuning adjustments that we saw with the launch of Season 2. So today I want to run down these changes, what they mean for the top 10 weapons, and what you should be using now, giving it a shot in Warzone 2.0. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below, anything that you would like to add or subtract from this list, Feel free to drop your preferred builds down there in the comment section. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you in the community if you'd like to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2 and anything COD related. And finally, check out my friends over at G Fuel and their 30% off discounts here for the month of February with code ESPRESSO linked below. But that said, let's jump into it. For this video, I want to take it in a slightly different direction, more direct with it. So we'll jump right into the classes and builds, as well as why you should give them a shot. So let's start firstly with the long range weapons or medium to long range builds that can suffice for distances across Al Mazra or Sheikah Island. First up, let's talk about the Sokken or Saken MG38. This is one that I think is going to be a challenger to the RPK throne. While the RPK was nerfed here as of yesterday's update once again, like I mentioned, a more comprehensive nerf as opposed to what we saw with the Season 2 launch weapon tuning. The Sokken has always been a rather comparable weapon to the RPK, but noticeably we haven't seen any tuning done to this just yet. It's got high damage as per the norm with LMGs. It's very easy to control. It's got a 100 round box mag by default, so you have all the staples here of a weapon that can keep you in the fight and do very well for you. So for this, I'd recommend the 20-inch Bruin Silver Series Barrel, the ZLR Talon 5, the Bruin Warrior LMG Under Barrel, the Bruin Q900 Grip Ramp, and the AMOP V4, or in my case, sometimes I'll also like to throw on the SZ SRO 7 Optic in place of that, but again, Optic really comes down to preference a lot of the time. As with all the builds you'll see here in this video, weapon tuning values are on the left-hand side of the overlay, just so we're not calling out monotonous numbers here with every single build, but this loadout for the Sokken really focuses on the damage range, bullet velocity, recoil control, but as well, tries to keep it balanced with that sprint to fire and ADS speed, because LMGs notoriously slow by default, but when you kit them out more so for recoil, you're going to sacrifice even more mobility. So we try to strike that balance, and it's one that I think that you can do very well with. The next weapon we'll talk about here for our medium to long range is one we've talked about before. It's still a favorite of mine, super easy to control, one of the lowest recoil weapons in the game with a favorable damage output that being the TAC-56. The build has not changed, so we can breeze through this here, the 17.5-inch Tundra Pro Barrel, the Echoless 80 Muzzle, the 5.56 High Velocity Ammunition, the 60-round Magazine, and the FSS Combat Grip. Again, one that I think is just very easy to control, but can get the job done in a pinch situation, medium, long range, or sometimes even close quarters as well. After that, we're going to jump over to the RAL MG. Challenger, another one that may be trying to knock at the door for that RPK. Another weapon that might be knocking at the door here, trying to get in that position as a main meta weapon. Personally, I'd still take the Sokken over this just because, as you'll see, this build is much slower, but it's very easy to control and is a laser pointer with a lot of damage. It's slow but accurate and powerful, so if you want that LMG damage, this is one of your best bets in terms of that pure damage. For this, I'd recommend the 21-inch EXF Rhino Barrel, the FTAC Reaper, the XRK Dune Grip, the Stip 40 Grip, and an optic if you're choosing again. Me, personally, for medium to long range, it'll either be that SZ SRO 7 Optic or the AMOP V4, personal preference based on that. So, slower, but absolutely can get the job done here in regards to damage. Beyond that, the next one I want to talk about is the ISO Hemlock. At first, I was skeptical of the ISO. 45 rounds at max makes it tougher to compete in some of the rifle category, but it's a very manageable weapon. It's got a slower rate of fire than some of the others, so naturally the recenter speed is more in line for more control base. Recoil is really easy to manage, and its damage output is pretty nice as well. I try to take this for pure mid to long range fights because SMGs will be able to tear through this thing with the rate of fire by comparison and overtake you in close quarters unless you hit all headshots. So use this as a medium to long range weapon, but for this, I'd recommend the Fielder T50 Barrel, the Harbinger D20 Barrel, the 45 round magazine, the Phantom Grip, and the AMOP V4 Optic. It's a nice change of pace here if you're looking to end up putting the new weapon in your armory, but moving on to the final weapon we'll talk about to the medium to long range here is one that I think can kind of be a middle ground here. It wasn't something that I would recommend as purely close quarters, but if you need to, you can get the job done here in it as well. So kind of a transition point, the M13B. As with our discussion, 
discussion last week, the M13B really surprised me. Incredibly easy to control with that drop in damage per round. That trade-off usually makes it easier to manage with that recoil, but then with the fire rate, you do make up for it. You're firing enough rounds to make up for that if you are accurate. So for this, I'd recommend the Bruin Echelon Barrel, the Socken Tread 40 Muzzle, the Edge 47 Grip Under Barrel, the 60 Round Mag, and an optic of your choosing, whether that be a red dot sight, the AMOP V4, really comes down to what you want. And honestly, I think where you're playing. I'd take the red dot sight on places like Ashika Island, AMOP V4, in maybe longer distances like Almazra. So really up to you. Beyond that, let's move on over into the close range category here. Weapons that are for those hallway or corridor encounters getting up in the face of the enemy. The first one I want to start out with is the Lockman Sub. This one, as with the Ashika Island Top 10 we talked about last week, is a very easy to manage weapon, very powerful, nice mobility, and can get the job done. For this, I'd recommend the VLK Laser 7 Milliwatt, the Lockman Pulsar Barrel, the Lock Grip Precision 40 Under Barrel, the 40 Round Mag, and the Lockman TCG 10 Grip. These offering a little bit in terms of recoil control like you'd see in that Lockman TCG, that Lock Grip Precision grip as well, but also playing a bit more for the aim down sight speed and a bit more mobility with things like your barrel, your laser, and the 40 round mag just being there to give you a little more than just the base 30. So highly recommend that still. I love that build, having a lot of fun with that. The next weapon we'll talk about, well, this is the KV Broadside. This one, I both intentionally and unintentionally left off the Ashika Island Top 10 last week because one, I didn't have the weapon ranked up enough to get my hands on time with it to be adequate here to put into it. And also, I didn't see too much of it the first day or two that I was riding out here Ashika Island. So that was something that initially, it didn't seem like it fit the meta, but then also at the same time, I didn't want to propose and be ahead of the schedule here on that because I was just hoping we didn't see another OP shotgun meta. So annoying or hilariously fun to use, I think this one is dependent on if you're getting kills or if you're the one getting killed by it. So for this build, I'd recommend the Gunner D20, the 12 gauge Dragon's Breath, the 25 shell drum, the Dash Bolt 60 for a faster rate of fire, and the VLK Stockless to give you a bit more mobility. It is something that's a pain to go up against, but you can do very well with. Beyond that, I'd recommend the Vaznev 9K, one that we've talked about again in the Ashika Island loadout video last week, one that's kind of a hybrid between sheer sprints of fire and aim down sight speed, but also mixing in a little control where applicable as well. For this, I'd recommend the FSS OV Laser, the Cas 1 381mm barrel, the 45 round magazine, the True Tack Grip, and the Markiev R7 stock. Still love that one, having a blast with it, give it a shot if you guys have not done so already. Then to round out our strictly close quarters weaponry, the Basilisk. As we talked about with last week's Ashika Island Top 10 loadout video, this thing has not been touched since then, by the way, so it is absolutely still going to get the job done. This, you don't want to run a Kimbo, but the single shot is basically having a shotgun as a secondary, and again, you don't have to sacrifice a perk to use overkill to get this. It will blast through enemies in a two-shot, breaking armor with the first hit, downing with the second. For this, I'd recommend the Revo LSD 7 milliwatt laser, the Bryson HTA trigger action, the snake shot ammunition. That's what ends up making this thing, the S40 rapid loader, so you can end up getting quick reloads, and the SO RO90 grip for that pistol fast draw sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed. It is truly one that will shred through enemies' close quarters, so give it a shot if you guys have not done so already. And so finally, that brings us to number 10 here. Can we finally get out of the top 10 without mentioning the RPK? Well, unfortunately, not entirely. It is something that I put it here as number 10 of 10 because it's not the clear-cut choice anymore. The increase to the horizontal recoil in the most recent update also then cut into the damage ranges. It's noticeably different, but still viable. If you can control it, it still can get the job done. But again, I'd take the Socken over it. I'd take the RAL MG over it if you're just playing strictly MGs. I'd take the TAC-56, the ISO Hemlock, mostly because, yes, they are easier to use, but also because aren't you tired of the RPK after four months by now? But, I mean, it's still in there. It's hanging on by a thread, I think. But for this build, I'd recommend the Castovia DX90 Barrel, the FTAC Ripper Under Barrel, the 7.62 High Velocity Ammunition, the Demo X2 Grip, and the SC SRO 7 Optic, or the AMOP V4, whichever you prefer of those two. But that said, that is my top 10 loadouts here that I would recommend for Season 2 after the update, and what you can use across both Ashika Island as well as Almazra. But that said, that is where we're going to wrap it up. Before we do, though, two things. Let me know your thoughts down below on this top 10. What of the 
these are you liking disliking is there anything in particular you would like to add to this list and what would your preferred build be as well make sure you check out my friends over at g fuel code espresso is 30 percent off on a few select items for the month of february things like hype sauce and starfruit two of my personal favorite tubs that you can end up getting are 30 percent off with code espresso here for this month so if you guys are at all interested make sure you check that link down there in the description below and use code espresso at checkout but for now that is what we're gonna call it let me know your thoughts down below once again if you enjoyed the video you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare 2 warzone 2 and anything cod related but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace